whether you are in elementary school, college, or postgrad, I know that at some point in time you've asked yourself this question. Do students who always stop in class enjoy more economic success later in life? How could we answer this question? You guessed it, the quantitative research process. Here are eight significant steps of the quantitative research process. Step number one, initial observation or choice of research topic. The first step in the quantitative research process is to make an observation of a particular topic of interest. For example, based on my background in mass communication advertising major, I'm pretty interested in the effect that social media has on consumer behavior. In my socialization with my friends, I have previously observed that friends who spend more time on Instagram are more likely to eat out than those who use Instagram more sparingly. With this observation, I can formulate a research question. What is the effect of Instagram on users' consumer behavior? This leads us to the second step of the research process, which is finding a theory that supports my observation. A theory can be defined as an explanation or set of principles that are well substantiated by repeated testing and which explain a broad phenomenon. We should therefore keep in mind that the development of a theory is only possible through rigorous and repeated hypotheses. Theories provide a framework in which we view the world. There are numerous established mass communication theories that I can use in my research example. The one that comes to my mind in my issue of interest which is the likeliness of Instagram users to eat out is the agenda setting theory. The agenda setting theory posits that the media shapes social debate by determining the issues that are important and allocating them more prominence in broadcast. In the era of social media, the agenda setting characteristics of mass media is still much more relevant. Some of my friends that use Instagram more may be victims of the agenda setting role of the media. This might be influencing them to want to eat out more compared to preparing homemade meals. Having retrieved our theory, we move to the third step of the research process which is generating hypotheses. A hypothesis is defined as an explanation for a narrow phenomenon or set of observations. So, after retrieving a theory that relates to our research topic, we'll then formulate a hypothesis that is derived from the theory but is more narrowly focused. So, a hypothesis will be formulated in a way that it relates to a specific area of study but is also more narrowly focused. In my example, I hypothesize that Instagram increases the propensity of users to eat out. Having drawn up my hypothesis, I'm ready to move to the fourth step of the research process, which is generating predictions. After drawing up my hypothesis that Instagram increases the propensity of users to eat out, I can then make a prediction that increased Instagram use is associated with higher consumerism behaviors among users. So my efforts in the next steps of my research will be focused on collecting data that will help me to test my prediction and either approve or disapprove such predictions. Having developed precise predictions, we can therefore move to the fifth stage of the research process, which is choosing the research design. Our choice of research design in a research study will be influenced by the phenomena of the study. For example, if you are studying the perceptions of people, it would make sense to adopt the qualitative research design. On the other hand, if we are studying the rate of occurrence of a given phenomenon, adopting the quantitative research approach would be the most ideal. So for our case, we are focusing on quantitative research design. There are four main quantitative approaches we can use including correlational, descriptive, quasi-experimental, and experimental research. So having made a decision on the research design to utilize for our research, we can now move to the sixth stage of the research process which is collecting data. Data collection is an essential step of research. This is because it helps to test our hypothesis and eventually approve or disapprove such hypothesis. In my example, by collecting data, I will be able to approve or disapprove my hypothesis that Instagram increases the propensity of users to eat out and increased Instagram use is associated with higher consumerism behavior among users. In order to test hypotheses so that we can approve or disapprove them, we need to measure variables. In the data collection step of research, we have to differentiate between the independent and the dependent variables. The independent variable represents a proposed cause, while the dependent variable represents a proposed outcome. The independent variable in my example is the use of Instagram. The dependent variable in my example is the behavior of Instagram users. In my research example, Instagram use, which is the cause, has a desired effect 
impact on behaviors of individuals who use the social media network. Having collected data related to the independent and dependent variables, we are now ready to move to the seventh step of research, which is analyzing data. The seventh step of the research process is data analysis. Data analysis helps to make sense of the data collected and to either approve or disapprove our hypothesis. Different approaches can be utilized in data analysis, including frequency distributions, mode, mean, median and dispersion in distribution. We can also use other sophisticated statistical approaches. So, in our example, if we found that a higher frequency of Instagram use is directly related to the increased probability of such users to eat out, we could approve one of our hypotheses that the use of Instagram increases the propensity of users to eat out compared to preparing homemade meals. After completing the data analysis step of the research process, we are ready to move to the eighth and final step of the research process, which is reporting data. After data analysis, it's important to report your findings in the right way. This includes following scholarly writing guidelines, such as the APA or MLA formats, and using tables and graphs to make the data more understandable to the target audience. Do you have any questions about the quantitative research process? Post it in the comment section and I will be more than glad to answer your questions.